Joining me right now with his take is Kentucky Senator Rand Paul. He's the ranking member of the Senate Committee on Small Business and Entrepreneurship. He also sits on the Foreign Relations and Homeland Security Committees. Senator, good morning to you. Thanks very much for being here. Good morning. We're on the doorstep of 100 days. Assess the agenda. Well, you know, just a couple of months ago, we were hearing from President Biden, the newly inaugurated President Biden, that he was going to unify the country and that we were going to work together and have bipartisanship. I'm still waiting, Mr. President. I haven't seen any of that. I think what I've seen so far is it's Biden's way or the highway. So right off the bat, instead of working together on anything to do with COVID or vaccines, they put together a massive $2 trillion bill where less than 10% of it had anything to do with vaccines. Now they're doing the same thing on infrastructure. Apparently reparations are infrastructure. Apparently child care is infrastructure, health care. They've got, you know, a, a climate police force they're going to put out, youth force. But I don't see anything that looks like they want to work together. Now there are those of us who are saying we could be for some a bipartisan and infrastructure bill if it, if it had to do with real infrastructure like roads and bridges and if it was paid for. But so far, I don't see any of that coming from Biden. And I predict they're going to ram through something with only Democrat votes and no Republican participation again to a tune of a couple trillion dollars. Well, how do you justify ramming all of this through, uh, through reconciliation, through executive orders, when he keeps saying unity, unity? For example, let's talk about this upcoming week. We will hear details on the economic plan. How high will taxes go? What's the impact of all of this? Um, and many of your colleagues have complained that this quote unquote infrastructure package is really a Green New Deal. Well, and the markets are jittery. They're jittery about doubling the capital gains tax and then some. They're jittery about raising the corporate income tax. One of the best things we did in the Republican years under Trump was lower the corporate income tax, and it brought hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars back to the U.S. Just in my town, Bowling Green, Kentucky, the Corvette plant added 400 jobs because General Motors had hundreds of millions of dollars returned to them by having lower corporate income tax. So when you raise this, the opposite happens. We'll have more jobs go overseas, more corporations go overseas. But I think even more worrisome than raising the corporate tax is actually doubling the, the capital uh, gains tax. If you make capital gains tax upwards of 40 percent, there's a real risk that you are going to a, see a significant market reaction to this. The other thing is we're printing up so much money that there's going to be real inflation. And I think there's going to be a day in which people wake up and say, oh, my goodness, what have we done to our country? And sometimes this happens gradually. But sometimes, you, as you know, the market can react in remarkable ways uh, such that we could have never predicted. That's the kind of thing I'm worried about with all this money being printed up. Oh, yeah. And the highest rate on capital gains for the uh, highest earners is going to go all the way up to 43.4 percent, we understand. And of course, logic tells you if you have made money on the sale of your home, if you have made money in, in your portfolio, you obviously are going to sell that in 2021 and get a 20 percent cap gains tax versus 2022, where you could be facing upwards of 43 uh, percent giving to the government. So you make a great point. It's something I've been covering a lot on Fox Business on Mornings with Maria as well.